Now the next infrastructural challenge that we face is of transport. Now transport not only means carrying people from one place to another. In economics it is also very important because it carries the final product to the consumer from one place where it is produced how it finally reaches the consumer. So from that point of view also transport is very important. Now what are the various means of transport? We all know railways, road, railway transport, road transport, water transport and air transport. These are the four ways in which we can carry goods and people from one place to another through road, through water or through from air. Now let us take them up one by one. First, railways. Railways is the fourth largest network we have in the world. India is has the fourth largest network in the world. The route length that is there is 65,400 kilometers area is covered by railways. Now there are two main segments from where the revenue comes. One is through freight and the other is through passengers. Freight is carrying of goods. Now through goods, carrying of goods, 70% of the revenue comes and through passengers, 30% of the revenue comes. Had you not studied this, you must have always thought that through passengers, you get the railways earns revenue. But their actual source of revenue is through carrying of goods from one place to another. That is through freight. So 70% of the revenue is generated through freight and the rest 30% is through passengers. So we will see the problems that have been faced by railways uh, in the past years. The electric and diesel locomotive is very old. The wagons that they use are very old and they are in urgent need of modernization. There is an urgent need of modernizing them and introducing new engines. Then the railway network is very small and inadequate for the size of country of India. The network that we have is still inadequate. We need to have better services and better network. Then railway faces a financial crunch because the revenue model, they try to generate uh, money only through revenue model, but now it is insufficient. There needs to be more investment in the sector to bring them out of this financial crunch. Then heavy losses are also incurred by railways because there are many food articles, necessary food articles like food, uh, like fruits and vegetables, which are carried at a very low cost. And other necessity items, there are food articles and other necessity uh, articles that they carry at a low cost and so since freight is the most important source of revenue and that too they carry on a low cost so they incur losses. Then we all know it is overcrowded especially in festive seasons and all we know that it, how it is overcrowded and we feel that there is shortage of uh, these facility. Then there are poor passenger services also in terms of security and everything. The services are not so good. The safety measures that are adopted are also not sufficient. Still, we get to see so many accidents happening. Then there have been, what are the steps that have been taken to improve on uh, or to overcome these problems? There has been an improved resource management has been done. Then rational price policy has been introduced so that uh, burden is not even felt on the passengers and uh, the revenue generated is increases. Then increase wagon load. We should, uh, the, the railways should aim at increasing their wagon load that the uh, freight that they are carrying or the amount of goods that they are carrying that should be increased. Then there should be faster turnaround time. The moment a uh, wagon loaded with goods go, it should be unloaded and then should uh, come back again. So the frequency of that traveling should be increased. Then there should be public private partnership. It should be introduced in the railway sector also. Now the second mode of transport is the road which is the second largest in the world which is the second railways were the fourth largest we are we were the fourth largest network in the world and in terms of road we are the second largest in the net uh, uh, in the world it has a network of around 4.86 million kilometers and 2% of the national highways of the total roads that are there 2% of it is national highways and they carry around 40% of the total road traffic. Now, Pradhan Mantri Bharat Jodo Pariyojana has been started to link all the major, to link all the major cities. So,
so that the connectivity becomes better. Similarly, on that front only, Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana has been uh, implemented to for rural roads. This is also very important because there were very kacha roads in the rural sector and there was a lot of problem. There was complete problem of connectivity. How can the youth of a village come to a nearby town to uh, find for finding employment opportunities when the road is not going to be proper? Or how can a child come to a college near uh, from from his village to the town on that road? So for all these purposes, Pradhan Mantri Gram Sarath Yojana was introduced and because of that, 65% all weather roads have been connected. Rural roads network connection has been made. Now, making rural roads uh, is one of the six components of the Bharat Nirman. The goal is to provide connectivity to a habitation of 1,000 people with good all-weather roads and a uh, habitation of 500 people in hilly areas to have good all-weather roads. So, if there are 1,000 people living, there should be a good connectivity or road for them. And similarly, in hilly areas, if uh, there is a population of 500 living together, then they should have better connectivity. It is one of the major goals of Bharat Nirman. So, Pradhan Mantri Bharat Jodo Pariyojana is of connecting cities and Bharat Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana is of making rural roads. Both these Pariyojanas were started in the year 2001. Now, what are the problems that have been faced by the, uh, this sector? They are again inadequate considering the size of our country. They are still insufficient. Then the connectivity, we know still it is very poor in hilly areas. Still you will get to see large mud roads and uh, inappropriate roads. Even in cities during monsoon, you see such pathetic roads because they are poorly maintained by the state governments. And then there are heavy losses also incurred to the state road, uh, state run uh, transport corporation. Because one, because the roads are poor and second, their transport facilities, the buses that they use, they are also very poor and people avoid using them. So, they are running in losses. Now, what are the steps that have been taken? A very important step that has been taken is development of NHDP, National Highway Development Program. It is a golden quadrilateral has been built which connects the four metros together. Then, north-south and east-west corridor has also been coming up. 11th and 12th plan also express ways have been uh, coming up for in areas where there is high traffic and then where there were one lanes, one way lanes, two lanes have been are being uh, made and then inter-regional connectivity is also being increased so that people can travel easily from one place to another. If there is lack of uh, employment opportunities in their villages, they can come easily to the nearby towns. So for all these purposes, uh, steps have been taken to improve the situation. Now, the third mean of transport is the water transport, which is not used much. It is a sector which has been neglected over the years. Now, inland water transport means when you travel through rivers, canals and creeks and backwater. This is called as inland water transport. There is 14,500 kilometer of navigable waterways in India and five waterways are declared national waterways like from like Allahabad to Haldia. It passes from Ganges to Brahmaputra to Hooghly River. This is the first national highway and similarly there are four others. There are five national highways and four more are coming up. So, the now the Ministry of Shipping is uh, giving importance to develop this mode of transport also. It has been neglected over the years. Next is shipping. There are two types of shipping. One is coastal shipping that is done within the country and then there is overseas shipping. We have a coastline of 7,517 kilometers and there, there are 12 major ports and 200 minor ports. The 12 major ports are looked after the, by the Ministry of Shipping, Central Government. Central Government looks after them and minor ports are looked after by State Government. This is when we are talking about movement within the country. And overseas shipping is when we trade with 
the other country. Now, 95% of the global merchandise trade that happens that happens through overseas shipways, seaways, and Kandla is the top traffic handler. Now, what are the problems that are faced by the shipping or the water transport industry? First is the breakdown of cargo handling equipment. We are not very well equipped since it has been an industry which has not been developed much. So, people or uh, the people working are not well equipped with how to handle the cargoes. Now, then dredging facilities are not there. Dredging is uh, a kind of an excavation activity, underwater excavation activity uh, in the shallow waters to make the water more uh, navigable. It is like they remove the sediments and all to make the water more navigable. These kinds of facilities are not available in India. And then the container handling, the container that comes, their handling facilities are not also not proper. And there is lack of proper coordination because the sector has not developed much. Then handling Indian containers, the containers that come, they are the cost of handling them is also very high in comparison to other international ports. And then there are inefficient port equipments. It has not, the port equipments that they have are not of good standard or they are not modernized enough. So these are the problems that are faced by Indian ports. The next way of transport is air transport. When we have to uh, travel long distance, long distance, then and uh, there is lack of time or shortage of time. This is the mode of transport that is adopted for business travel purposes, etc. But nowadays it has uh, become a very common mode of transport. More and more people adopt to this way of transport. Now it is basically there are three. Areas in air transport, operational area, infrastructure and development. When we talk of operation, there are 10 uh, players, there are 10 uh, op operational sources, 3 are governments and 7 are private sector. 3 are government owned like Air India and all and then there are private players like Indigo, Go Air etc. So, and recently, earlier, it was only the um, public sector, the government sector that was providing services. But then it has been privatized and the private sector market has grown tremendously. And now 82% of the services, operational services are run by the private sector. Then infrastructure, to look after the infrastructure, AAI manages it, Airport Authority of India. It manages 125 airports. Now, along with uh, the Airport Authority of India, along with private players now, looks after the maintenance and building of new airports. New five, five new airports have come up, like in Kochi, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Mumbai, and uh, Delhi international airports. And they have been made good standard airports with the help of Air Authority and the private players. Both have worked together. And the development part is looked after in the 11th and 12th plan. A lot of emphasis had been given on uh, providing better services for users as well as service providers and era airport economic regulatory authority was set up for this purpose now domestic passenger traffic traffic handling has reached nearly 122 million in 13 and 14 and more and more people are adopting to this way of transport with this we come to the end of this chapter let us take up the quiz. Which of the following statement is incorrect? The Indian road network is second longest in the world. It is true. Road network is second longest and railways is the fourth longest. The rural road network connects around 65 of all weather roads. This is also true. Most of the state road transport corporations are running on profits. This is absolutely false. State road transport corporations are running in losses. And the national highways which are 2% of the total road network carry 40% of the total road. So which statement is incorrect? This statement is incorrect. The Indian railways have a route length of about 65.4 thousand kilometers. India has a long coastline of 7517 kilometers. 77. Seven. Keep that in mind if you don't remember the numbers. 7517 kilometers. Pradhan Mantri Bharat Jodo Yojana is associated with rivers, communications, highways or social integration. 
भारत जोड़ो एनी काइंड ऑफ भारत जोड़ो प्रधानमंत्री भारत जोड़ो ग्राम जोड़ो इज कनेक्टेड विद रोड्स हाईवे सो वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट रेलवे ट्रांसपोर्ट विच इज फोर्थ लार्जेस्ट which is fourth largest and 65.4 km 65.4000 km network road transport which is the second largest water transport shipping and inland waterways and then there was air transport we have taken them up Hope you'll remember that.